Hello. This is the power supply that I'm presently using for the Vocoder uh, for the 12 and minus 12 volts. Um, it's sodium ion cells. There are four in each pack and I'm charging them up to 12 volts or a bit higher, 12 and a half maybe and then discharging them down to whatever the op amps will take. Now currently this one is at 11.1. .1. That's not very bright, is it? This one, this has come adrift and I think I know why. Yeah, stupidly, I didn't put, there's a push button here and I didn't put any hot glue under the push button. I put it there to glue this on, but of course every time I push the push button, it was trying to lever this up. And eventually it did, and now that's come adrift, so that needs some new hot glue. But we'll look at this one for the purposes of this video, I think. So I'll just unplug that and unplug this as well. Batteries, I always have sockets, not plugs, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Right, let's put that to one side and also that. And we'll take a look at this thing, which is my little uh, voltmeter. And I've got a few of these come in. Um, recently got those got those and I've got one in a bag so that you can see the uh, what's written on the bag maybe even read that uh, QR code if you're clever um, and in this video I'm going to show how this thing is programmed and then I'm also going to take one of these apart and we'll take a look at what's inside um, so you press the button and that lights up the voltage display it also lights up this five-way bar what's interesting here um, is the first led of this first set of five is dimmer and i think that's because actually sometimes that lights up red so it's a dual color led whereas these are just fixed green leds these four these printed bars going up here don't really mean anything other than what is the meaning of these four LEDs. Now, because you've got a voltmeter, this is really rather unnecessary, which makes the um, setting the battery type a little bit unnecessary, I suppose. But um, that is the purpose of this thing. The, the purpose of programming this is to uh, set this, how charged the battery is, um, to a profile that matches either lead acid, lithium ternary, lithium ion phosphate or a user configurable one so we'll take a look at that too so press the button to turn it on press the button to turn it off now i think if you press and hold you start getting into the programming so we got l03 now that means lithium ternary three cells in series so that would be a classic 11.1 .1 volts oh i'm gonna have to work this out in my head yeah, I think it's 11.1, let's get that in focus. 11.1 on the bottom, uh, fully charged will be 12.6, won't it, for three cells. Now you can change the number of cells, but let's just go through this. If I do a single press now, F is uh, phosphate, no, LFP, iron, so ferrous. So this is lithium iron phosphate, three cells. Uh, that would be lead, P stands for lead, and you can have lead, 12 volts, let's press and hold that actually yeah now you can edit the field so you can either have lead 36 volt or oh, 48 volts but i don't believe this one goes up to 48 volts so 12 volts and then do you No, that still cycles around so it's gonna have to be a long press isn't it now if i long press this i think i've set it for lead 12 volts uh, so this bar graph thing will be uh, different now Okay, how to program this thing. I had to take a bit of time out to remind myself how it's done. I think I've got it now. So press to turn it on. You can also press to turn it off. Press to turn it on. Now I think I've set it for 10 seconds timeout. So we'll wait for that timeout. Now it's saying the battery is very low because it's set to the wrong uh, type of battery. Yes, that has timed out after 10 seconds. Okay, press to turn it on. Press and hold to edit something. Now we've got lithium three cell. Now it doesn't actually show you what you last programmed it to. So I think I programmed it to lithium iron phosphate, F for iron, ferrous, uh, six cell or something like that. So let's try that again. 
but I'll actually do it as phosphate 4 cell this time. So press and hold to edit the field, single press to increment the field, press and hold to stop editing the field, and now if you press and hold without doing a single press to move around other menu items, it should drop back to the standard display and once again it's saying 11.1 .1 volts that's ridiculously low you've got a flat battery so now let's set it to what I actually want it to be well okay let's not do that let's turn it on press and hold to program it let's do lithium 3 cell uh, I'm gonna have to press to edit that now let's just see how many cells you can take it to uh, 10 cells, 11, 12, 3. So let's say I want lithium 3 cell. Press and hold to come out. Press and hold to come out of programming. And now it's saying it's 11.1 .1 volts, which it actually is. Um, but now it's saying, okay, that's not too bad. I'll give you one green bar. And it times out after 10 seconds. Well now, because this is neither lithium ternary nor lithium ion phosphate, it's actually sodium ion, um, I'm going to show you how to program the uh, user-defined bottom and top parameters. And I don't know whether it's a linear curve between those two. It doesn't tell you that. But anyway, let's do it. Press to switch it on. Press and hold to enter programming. We don't want lithium. We don't want iron. We don't want lead 12 volt. We want this, which is uh, just a bunch of eights and the little red LED is on at the bottom. Now that means you're programming the lower voltage. So press and hold to select a digit. It's the first digit. I'm going to set it to 08 volts. I want O. Press and hold to move to the next digit. I'm happy with that being on 8. Press and hold to move to the next digit. I want that to be a 0. Press and hold to to move to the next digit but it realizes that you've done all the digits so that's it now here's where you can go wrong you need to do a single press and now it lights up the little green LED at the top so what it's saying here is you're programming now the upper voltage press and hold to edit digits I want 12 volts here so let's have a one press and hold for the next digit and I want a two like that press and hold for the next digit and I want a zero press and hold for the next digit but it realizes that that's all the digits so that's it and now without doing a single press to change what I'm editing I need to press and hold to come out and that's come out and it's saying you're at 11.1 .1 volts which is two bars out of four I suppose that is. Now to me that doesn't seem very linear. It's also timing out after um, uh, 10 seconds, which is good. If I switch it back on, let's, um, no, let's not do anything for the moment. Right, let's now do something where you can go wrong. Let's switch it on. Press and hold to go into editing. Move around to, that's the uh, user definable, which I've done and now um, I'll do the timeout. Now zero is never timeout, stay on indefinitely unless you press the switch to turn it off. But let's do say 20 seconds. So let's edit this and go up to two. Now that means 20 seconds. Press and hold to stop it editing. And now if I go to a new field, it stays in the editing and there's no way out unless you edit something. So we're going to have to go back round, back to the backlight. It doesn't tell you what you've set it to, so we're going to have to edit it again. I'll set it to 2, which means 20 seconds. I'll say stop editing. And now you must press and hold at that point to drop out. So now we should be on a 20 second timeout. So I'm going to have to talk for 20 seconds to see whether this 20 second timeout has actually been approved. Now, unfortunately, I have soldered this directly to the battery, so there's no way that I can power this down because, yeah, that is a 20 second timeout. When you power it up, it does tell you something, I'll show you.
So while I was trying to relearn how this thing works, I thought I'll get this one, bend the wires over and poke them in these holes. Now see what happens when I power this one up. Uh, it may happen quite quickly, but power it up. It says little red light, eight volts. So what I think it's trying to tell you is that it's programmed to little red light at the bottom, eight volts. In other words, a user programmed um, curve. So it's not lithium ternary, it's not iron phosphate, it's not lead acid, it is user defined. And I presume that because I've set it eight at the bottom, 12 at the top, it's linear between those two numbers. Although my experience is that it's not, actually doesn't feel like it's linear between those two numbers, but I don't really know. So this one, of course, the battery is at 11.1 volts. I think this is set to a 10 second timeout. The only way you'll know that is to sit and watch it for 10 seconds and it times out. Right, I think now it's time to take one of these apart. Um, there are actually three different types here. This one has the test button and the five LEDs, but doesn't actually have a numerical display. So this one, you can only uh, see 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100% indications. Uh, this one has a large area up there. So this does have the numerical display. That's the one I bent the leads back. So we've just been playing with that. This one is subtly different, but essentially it's the same. Instead of saying test, it says on. The 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 is laid out slightly differently. The LEDs on this one do seem slightly brighter. Maybe I'll take both of these apart. Uh, and then there's the numerical voltage display field there. But let's take this one apart for the moment because it's the same as the one I've got on my battery. Um, so what it looks like it is, is a circuit board on the bottom. It's getting a bit closer actually. So yeah, circuit board uh, with this JX4615N-A3 on it, programming header for the microcontroller. And you can see where these uh, pegs, these plastic pegs have been pushed through the circuit board and then a, a hot iron has been pushed over them. And that just holds what I think is a plastic tray, this plastic surround. And presumably this will have little separators for the digits um, for this display here so that they don't spill over into each other's areas. And then stuck over the top is just this plastic uh, top with little transparent window areas for these LEDs. But I think the thing to do to start is just to peel off this uh, plastic top. All right, let's see what a mess I make of this. So knife. Uh, yeah, I have difficulty. Oh no. That seems fairly straightforward. Peel that off. And uh, yeah, we can already see that there are little segmented areas just to make sure um, that uh, light doesn't spill from one area to the next. And there are lots of LEDs in here. How close can I get? Have I got a macro on this? I think I have. Right, so yeah, you can see the LEDs that make up the three digits. There's a decimal point there and there's a little light there for the V, um, which says volts. There are the four green LEDs for uh, the bar graph and one at the bottom. Now you can see that's a bigger dual LED. So that's red because sometimes you get a flashing red indicator here and sometimes you'll get a green indicator here um, and a push button. The push button is very, very tiny. But uh, yeah, these all sit in their little areas. So I guess now the thing to do is to hoik the circuit board out of this little plastic former and then we can see uh, the microcontroller. And now I would guess there are resistors for these LEDs because um, I think they're multiplexed. I think we saw that. Well, actually, let's have a quick look. Uh, so let's press the button. So that's the 11.1 .1, and then the little light up in the top there is the V. Now, is that multiplexing? Yeah, I think you can see that that one is flickering. Oops. And so this is being multiplexed. 
Um, so yeah, there should be resistors. I don't think there'll be current limited outputs on the uh, microcontroller. You can also see uh, that that double LED, oh, I don't know whether I can see that only half of it's lit up. It's fairly obvious, I think, that it's dimmer than these two. They look brighter than that one. Um, but yeah, because that's a double LED there, uh, it does sometimes look dimmer than these uh, four. Anyway, let's rip the circuit or rip this plastic top off the circuit board. Um, this looks like a good place to do it because there's actually a a little pillar here. I don't know whether that's for a screw. I don't quite know what that's for actually. Uh, I've got to get in here somehow and get this board. Oh yeah, I've levered and broken one of the, broken more of the little pillars. And the last one. Um, okay, that's out. Oh, that's a very tiny chip, isn't it? Let's get in close. Right, try and get the best shot of this that I can. There's a microcontroller. I think it says P-U-Y-A, Puya, or something. Can you see the part number of that? If I come closer, it goes out of focus, so no. Um, so what it seems to be is anti-reverse polarity diode, resistor there, switch. Um, I can't see any resistors for these LEDs, actually. That's interesting. Maybe they're all multiplexed onto one resistor but yeah you can see the digit 8 leds the decimal point led the v for volts led uh, the programming connector here oh it says plus 3.3 .3 volts this i guess then is a 3.3 .3 volt regulator some well a big capacitor some small capacitors and resistors microcontroller yeah and that's really it but i can't see individual and there's nothing on the back, is there? No, oh, camera's about an inch from the top of the desk, so I keep knocking it. Uh, no, I can't see any resistors for current limiting of the LEDs, so maybe there's just one resistor for that, and everything else is just multiplexed into various outputs. But the chip itself only has five pins on four sides, so that's 20 pins. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, one final thing which I didn't mention, um, I don't know whether I've shown it, but let's go into programming. So lithium, uh, ferrous, lead, user programmable field. I don't know why all the eights come on. I suppose it's a good segment test. Um, backlight, how long it stays on. You've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 seconds, um, or zero means it's on all the time. Then there's Cal, and I presume you can calibrate this so that it matches the voltage that you measure with your DMM. I've never gone into this because I don't want to muck up the calibration, but I thought I'd just show you that it's there, and... <laughs> If you buy one of these, you can figure out for yourself how the calibration thing uh, works. So how do I get out of this? The only way out is to either unplug it, which I can't really do because that's soldered on, or edit something, and probably the least destructive is to edit the timeout. So let's edit that. Set it to 1, which is 10 seconds. Press and hold to stop the editing, and then without changing the field with a short press, do another long press and it drops out to the measuring screen. And now it should apply my 10 second timeout, what I've just set. So that's it. That's this little, and I'll put a link to it in the description, of course, the little JX. 4615N-A3. They're quite cheap. They're only like $2 each. So yeah, well worth getting one and taking it apart to see what's inside. And they're very useful as a quick test um, to see where your battery voltage is. Obviously they can't do on a per cell basis, but yeah, it'll tell you the overall voltage of your pack. Well, I think that's it for this video. So I'm going to say cheerio.